Hi everyone, this is Nia and today I'm going to be making these butterfly bookmarks. At first, I struggled with the symmetry of this painting since you all know I have a problem with symmetry, but after a few times, this painting became very relaxing and therapeutic once I got the hang of it. So like usual, let's start with a few sketches to break down the shapes. So this is the basic shape of the butterfly that I'm going for. The body is made out of three sections, the head, the body, and the bottom. I'm not really sure what they're called. And as for the wings, I'm actually just going to keep painting the same shapes later. I personally found that painting rounder wings is easier for me personally. In fact, when I paint it later, I tend to even paint almost circular shapes as the base of the wings. So here, just try to get used to drawing something as symmetrical as possible with these basic features, and then try to angle them in different directions like what I did here. Now this is where I customize the shape slightly while adding the details. I can extend parts of the tip of the wings with the darker color of the details while painting in the design later. And as for the design, I like to play around with things like dots, curved lines, and also petal shapes while placing them in different directions. And I try to add more detail around the outer and the inner part of the wings while leaving the middle with simpler designs like just the curved lines. How you position them will help you create different varieties. I like to create a good amount of detail on the wings personally, but you can also make simpler ones or mix it up in your composition. I personally don't know anything about butterflies, so what I did was search Pinterest and Google and look at different types. Then I tried to take away the main features after looking at them, which for me I found was the dots, curved lines, and the petal shapes and then I just try to vary them. So the ones that I'm going to paint later are just essentially complete doodles for my head. But if you ever feel the need to, it will also help to have a few references right in front of you, even if you are not going to copy straight from them. But you can just use them as a base to mix and match for your own designs if you ever feel the need to. So far, we've been drawing them in one position only, and I want a bit of variation like usual, so I'm going to paint some of them with their wings closed, but this is optional. For the ones with their wings closed, honestly, I have no idea if I'm drawing out butterflies or moths. I think they look more like moths, but I just like to create an open triangular shape first to fit their head, then add the wings on either side facing backwards. Then in terms of the design, I just use the same elements, but this time on the wings, which are facing a different direction to what it was before. So it's basically the same thing, but just in a different set of wings. I think once you get used to drawing them out and getting used to the type of elements you're going to pair up for your designs, it's a good idea to move on to the next step. Here before making the bookmarks, you can try to sketch out different ideas for the shape of the bookmarks. You can even be creative and make the shape of the bookmark one big butterfly if you'd like, but since I want to doodle a few of the butterflies, I'm just going to pick simpler shapes and here are just a few ideas if you want to customize yours. I personally like these two shapes, so I'm just going to combine them by using the first choice and then I'm just going to round the edges. You can paint your designs on before cutting your bookmarks if you would like to, but I'm just going to cut mine out first. It really doesn't matter too much. And just in case you want to create the same shape as mine, here are the measurements on the left. My paper was 10 centimeters by 15 centimeters to start off with, which was a bit too tall, so I cut off the height so it becomes 14 centimeters. Then I just snipped off the corners and round the edges. I'm going to be painting the pink one first, so here are the colors that I'll be using. I have Quinn Red by Daniel Smith, Vermilion by Holbein, Yellow Ochre by Holbein, Sean Brilliant by Holbein, and Sepia by Holbein. I'll also be using a 0.05 ink pen and white jelly roll pen. I'm not going to give you specific color mixes here, but essentially you can use the reds as in the Quinn Red and the Vermilion as the base for your pinks, 
and you can warm the pinks further using yellow ochre if you want more of a salmon or like a coral color and to create more of a pastel pink you can just add the jean brilliant as for the sepia i'm going to use that to mute the color if you would like to but i'd be very careful to not put too much sepia because that's going to be the base color for the details later on and i want to keep the colors quite contrasted for the values and hues so i'm just being mindful to not go overboard with that color for the wings as you can see i'm creating almost like two circles next to each other with a gap in the middle then i paint a couple more underneath them but smaller and that's basically my trick to getting better accuracy for the mirrored shapes which is just to simplify the shape to something i'm more familiar with of course, if you don't have the same problem as I do, you can always paint them according to the shape you have in mind. But I feel like making these basic shapes for the base also helps me with the design later and I just feel like it makes the design so much more easier once you've mapped out the placement of the butterflies. As for the wings, it is optional, but sometimes I like to add a slightly thicker consistency paint next to where the body of the butterfly is going to be just to create a nice gradient for the base color. But sometimes it is redundant if you are going to add quite a detailed design on top because this gradient will no longer be visible. So just be mindful of that if you would like to show off the gradient of the base color and just try to not paint in too much detail on top later on. For the body of the butterfly, I use a thick consistency sepia that's almost black and I like to paint in the head and the body first. And then as for the bottom, I just pull the paint from the body of the butterfly so the bottom looks a bit softer. Then I finish them off by drawing out the antenna using a 0.05 ink pen so I can get very fine and delicate lines quickly. If you ever find an awkward space like what I have here, sometimes I just like to add a smaller butterfly to fit it in and even out the spacing. Then after that, I'm just going to add very small ones using different types of pinks again. This time, I want to paint them flying around, so it's facing the side. And for this, you just need to paint one side of the wing, so the large circle and the smaller one, with an added curved line on wherever the butterfly is facing. And here are just a few close-ups, so hopefully it makes a bit more sense. So here, after the wings are almost dry, I'm going to paint in the head, the body, and then draw out the antenna with my pen. Finally, on to the fun part here. I'm going to take a thick consistency of sepia to have ready on my palette. Then I'm also going to take some quin red, vermilion, and yellow ochre on the side separately so I can mix it in with the sepia and change up the tone of the sepia slightly for all of the butterflies. And it will look like it has different color combinations. Like usual, you can just mix and match your colors for this. The only tip I'd like to give you here is to make sure that the load on your brush is fairly light and not too wet so you can control how quickly the paint flows out of your brush as you're painting those thin lines so if you have excess paint or water on your brush always have a tissue right next to you to dab the excess off I'm sticking to the same brush size here but of course you can switch to a smaller one for better control or if you have access to brush pens or watercolor pencils you can also doodle on the details with those medium if it makes it a bit easier. I personally love the flexibility of watercolors so I'm just going to stick with this because I find that I can control the value a bit better and along the sides I just like to use a thicker consistency sepia to darken the edges and bring a bit more contrast to the design. Here's where the white jelly roll comes in. I like to use this to add on tiny dots along the edges or parts of the painting which might look a bit bulky from the dark colors and use the white to break off the shape. Thank you. 
I forgot to mention here, but if you haven't noticed, I actually intentionally painted some of the butterflies close to the edge since I don't want any frame or space around the sides. So for the final splatters and decorative elements later, I am also going to utilize the whole space except for the area where I want to punch the hole at the top. So now I'm just going to add on the designs for the rest of the large butterflies and I'll get back to you once I'm ready to move on to the next step. Once I finish painting all the designs on the wings, I'm going to add pink splatters. I used a mixture of Jean Brilliant, Vermilion, and Yellow Ochre, and then I'm just going to coat a heavy load on my brush, then splatter by tapping the brush on my finger to create very sparse splatters. Once I have a few dots visible, I'm going to add larger ones on the empty areas manually with the same color. Then as final accent, I'm going to take the most yellow gold from my Fine Tech Gold palette and just do small brush strokes randomly just to add a bit of metallic flair to finish the painting off. So that's it for the pink butterfly design. I decided to paint both sides because I just find it looks a bit more polished that way, but I'll just show you at the end. Now let's paint the blue version. Here are the colors that I'll be using. Firstly, I have Cobalt Green by Holbein, Manganese Blue by Winsor Newton, Graphite Gray by Daniel Smith, Russian Blue by Holbein, and Thalo Turquoise by Daniel Smith. For the base of the blue butterflies, I'm going to use a muted version of the individual colors by mixing it with a very tiny bit of graphite gray, but I'm also going to use the colors by themselves, which means there's a more saturated version as well. I like the colors individually, which is why I'm not going to do too much color mixing. And in terms of how I paint this, I'm going to just treat it the exact same way as how I painted the pink ones by painting two circles on either side, then angling the positions so the composition is a bit more fluid, and I also vary the wing positions as how I drew them up before. Just like before, if you feel like mixing up the colors slightly to create gradations, you can add slightly thicker consistency of any of the hues here in the palette on a wet surface and help it move around to create a soft transition. Then once I'm done distributing the wings, I'm going to add the head and the antenna. And for the body, I'm going to treat it the same way as before, but this time I'm using a thick consistency graphite gray. Then I'm going to just soften the bottom using a clean damp brush by pulling the graphite gray from the body that I initially painted. Now I'm going to add the smaller butterflies and I'm just using any of the colors that I have on my palette here. If there are any larger areas that 
I feel needs a slightly larger butterfly, I'm just going to add a slightly larger one to balance the space. Then once I finish them off, I just painted the head and the body, then I'm just going to draw out the antennas as well. For the details on the wings, I'm going to paint them the same way as before to keep the consistency of the painting so I can have these as a complete set. But I'm going to treat the graphite grey like how I used the sepia last time. So the graphite grey becomes the main colour, then I change the tone of the dark colour by mixing it with any of the blues or the cobalt green. I feel like with this palette, you can even use a higher ratio of some of the blue hues if they're quite dark, like the Prussian blue as an example, to create more of a vibrant combination, as long as the value is still much darker than the base color, so there's still a nice contrast to make the details very visible and crisp against the soft base. For this one, I added cobalt green to the previous mixture and I really like how the cobalt green gave the color a bit more of a pastel tone even though it's still dark. So feel free to just play around with the color mixtures, but if you're unsure, you can always just swatch them first on a scrap piece of paper to make sure that you have the tone that you're looking for. But apart from that, for these butterflies specifically, all you need to have is a light colored background or the base color for the wings and a dark value for the lines and details and that's basically it. You can even mix up hues to make purples, orange or green versions of these bookmarks as well. So yeah, from here I'll just finish off the rest of the details for the larger butterflies and I'll get back to you again once I'm ready to move on to the next step. Hopefully you can get a few ideas for your own butterfly wings from my doodles here if you decide to give this one a go. Okay, so just like before, I'm going to make the splatters by taking a heavy load of paint on my brush, then tapping it against my finger. This time, I just added water to whatever I had on my palette since there was a lot of paint left. And then just like before, I added some larger dots manually to balance out the composition. With this one, I want the metallic color to have a similar tone. Here, this is actually silver, but I had some blue left on it, so I decided to add cobalt green into the silver and added the lightest color of gold on this palette as well to mute the color slightly without losing too much of the shimmery quality. Then I just evenly distribute some random brush strokes in the composition, and this is the completed look for the second bookmark. Once I'm done, I'm just going to eyeball the middle, but you can also measure the middle to punch a hole. And all that's left is to pick out your ribbons. I'm going to pick a gold ribbon for the pink butterfly and this color that's similar to the cobalt green for the blue bookmark.
I cut quite a long length off because I can always snip it to the ideal length later and since the hole is pretty small after I fold it in half I needed to create smaller folds long ways to make sure that the ribbon can go through then I just loop the tips in and position it in place by pulling the other end to tighten it and then finish it off by cutting off the ends diagonally to the length I like and that's pretty much it I'm just going to repeat the same thing for the pink one as well So here are the completed bookmarks. As I mentioned, I also painted the backside as well. I think it just looks more polished that way. But if that's too much work for you, of course, you can just paint one side. And that's pretty much it for this tutorial. Even though I did repeat this a few times, I love how these bookmarks came out and I hope you guys enjoy making your versions as well. Like usual, all of the tools as well as my social media links will be in the description box. If you're still here, thank you so much for watching till the end and I'll see you at the next one. Bye!